This time on Filmmaker, we are looking at The Karate Kid. With five movies and now two seasons of a TV show, The Karate Kid has been a staple of pop culture ever since Mr. Miyagi and Daniel debuted back in the 80s. I still can't see a skeleton costume or a bonsai tree without thinking of it. Though, despite a lot of success, it hasn't all been crane kicks on the beach. So let's take a look back at both the films and the TV show and count them down from worst to best. Number six, The Next Karate Kid. After the first trilogy concluded, the producers tried to keep it going without Ralph Macchio's Daniel-san in the lead role, and the results were rocky. Miyagi goes from wise sensei to kind of a comedic babysitter. Cobra Kai are replaced by a weird army of overzealous hall monitors. There are a bunch of comedy monks, and a new lead played by Hilary Swank is really, really not interested in karate. It takes a good hour for anything to happen that would warrant karate being in the title, and even then it's a brief montage in the middle followed by three very high kicks near the end. It's a forgettable, quirky 90 90s teen comedy with the Karate Kid theme painted on top. Number 5. Karate Kid 3. There are actually great bits in the third Karate Kid movie. Daniel and Miyagi opening a bonsai store together is kind of terrific. The extraordinarily over-the-top performance by Thomas Ian Griffin as slimeball millionaire slash hatcher of weirdly extravagant plans to infiltrate a community tournament, Terry Silver, is also entertaining. But nobody makes normal human choices about anything in the final tournament's kind of a sad shadow of what we saw in the original. Still, if you look at it through the eyes of a purely B-movie experience, there's plenty to like. Number 4. The Karate Kid Remake The remake should really have been called The Kung Fu Kid, but that's neither here nor there. The 2010 version does have the negative of being a bit of an ad for tourism China, especially off the top, but it is fairly faithful to the essence of the original, and of course Jackie Chan's terrific as the spiritual successor to Mr. Miyagi. The martial arts in this one are crazy, especially in that final tournament, and to his credit, Jaden Smith actually holds his own. The story also mostly works, especially when Chan is on screen. There isn't a lot new here, but it's not a bad coat of paint. Number three, The Karate Kid 2. The second movie flips things, taking Daniel to Okinawa and moving Mr. Miyagi to center stage. It's a smart move and follows the classic fighting movie tradition of taking the sequel to the streets, or in this case, to the middle statue part of a traditional festival in a castle, but you get the point. There are some clunky bits, like how everyone in Japan only speaks English, even when Daniel isn't around, as well as a slightly convenient climax, but most of it works, including some poignant themes around industry and family, and there is a particularly solid romance angle that unfortunately gets dumped in the third film. Number two, Cobra Kai. The newest entry into the Karate Kid mythos is a weird and creative one. Cobra Kai picks things up 35 years after the events of the first tournament with Johnny Lawrence now taking the spotlight. There are so many possible pitfalls that this show could have fallen into, but it somehow avoids them. This is mostly because it takes itself and its history seriously. It never plays for the cheap jokes or sells out the characters. It also works because Johnny's take on the events are kind of feasible. Rewatch Watching the original movie, it's easy to see why he hates Daniel. Yeah, Johnny was more of a jerk than he thinks he was, but how would you feel if someone dumped water on you at your high school dance? It's an advanced class in how to use character foils with the people we know and a study in giving everyone meaningful story arcs for those new kids. Here's hoping season three carries on the high standard. Number one, The Karate Kid. It can get a bit tired seeing the original always get rated at the top on lists like this, but in this case, there can be no doubt. I remember seeing this for the first time as a kid, and it immediately captured my full imagination. I was one of those thousands of 7-12-year-olds to that took a karate class that summer. 
and then realized it's actually super hard and never went back. It's part of that pantheon of great 80s films. Perfect soundtrack, quick, fun story, and characters that are still memorable almost four decades later, both the heroes and the villains. I don't care how many times you watch it. Mr. Miyagi's always mesmerizing. Daniel's always kind of charming. And that final tournament will always get you up and out of your seat. And that is it. As you can probably tell, I'm a bit biased as a child of the 80s, but I would love to hear what everyone's favorites are and if anyone else was inspired by the new show to go back and rewatch the whole series. And please take a second to like and subscribe and hopefully I will see you all next time.